So chances are, if you're watching this video, you want to know how to turn off your airbag light on your Hyundai vehicle, whether it be a Sonata, Santa Fe, Elantra, or Accent, at least the ones I've seen, or you have you have an OBD2 scanner and you got the fault code B1448, although specifically this video is for that fault code. Now, if this light comes on, definitely recommend either going to an auto parts store or using a friend's OBD2 scanner. I don't know if an auto parts store near you will do it for free, but if they're able to test the scanner and you get this fault code B1448, that has to do with the occupant classification system. So, to make a long story short, there is a sensor under the passenger seat that tells the car if there is an individual sitting on the seat. Now, if there is no one on the seat and this light is off, in other words, the car thinks there's someone in the seat, but the airbag light is on, and also if you see the fault code, then there's a good possibility that your sensor is bad and it needs to be replaced. Now, either you can, if your car is under warranty, or if there's a recall on it, some vehicles and makes and models, there may be, this one isn't, this is a 2008 Hyundai Sonata GLS, so either we would have to pay a few hundred dollars for the mat, the sensor, replace it ourselves, or go to the dealership and pay up to like a thousand dollars, depending on make and model, and have them do it for you. Now, there's an easy fix which just involves you disconnecting the battery for a few minutes and if you have the scanner just clearing and see if it comes back if that doesn't work well try the easiest thing first which is why we do that but if that doesn't work then the next step which is what we're going to be doing and if you're watching this video then it worked is to buy this set this emulator it's about sixty dollars off of the website airbag 360 links will be in the description now what this does is that this just plugs in to where the sensor is, and I'll show you how to do it in a, in a minute. And it tells the car that there's always someone in the seat. Now, you should not have an infant in the seat. But, if there was an infant in the front passenger seat, and the airbags went off, that could be deadly for the infant, which is why this is, you need to think about whether or not you want to do this. Now. All this does is, like I said, this tells the car that there is someone on the front seat, on the passenger seat. So if you get into an, an accident and the airbags deploy, the passenger airbag will always deploy whether or not there's someone in the seat. Under normal conditions, if it's working perfectly and there's no one sitting in the seat, if you got into an accident, that airbag would not deploy. But with this emulator, it just tells the car someone's in the seat, so it's always going to be deployed if the car gets into an accident. And well, that's all this thing does. It just tells the car that there's someone always in the seat. And so now we're gonna start. And so now I'm gonna show you how to put it in. It's really not bad at all. So the first step in replacing the sensor, but also if you uh, wanna try the easiest first step, which you should just to see if this quick fix works, is to disconnect the negative terminal of the battery. Now you're discon gonna disconnect it, wait a few minutes, put it back on, and then you, if you have an OBD2 scanner, you're going to clear the fault code and see if it comes back. But I tried that already, it didn't work for me. So to start with the scanner, we're just gonna disconnect the negative terminal. This is a 10 millimeter nut. And just be careful not to let make a connection between the negative terminal and some other metal component of the car. Otherwise, you're going to create a spark, and well, that's not good. So just make sure the terminal and the connection do not touch, and you're good to go. All right. So while we're waiting for a few minutes from since we disconnected the battery, we're going to remove the four bolts. One, two three and four to get the seat up. Now, you don't have to do it. You can just slide the seat all the way back and you should be able to reach it. But just so you can see what I'm talking about in the video and the better angle, I'm just gonna remove the seat. So first off, you're gonna have two covers. They just flip right off. And under those covers, you're gonna have two nuts holding on, holding this seat together. And 
they are 14 millimeters or 14 millimeter socket you're going to need. So that's it, just a 14 millimeter nut. One on that side, and then this one too. And remember, there's two in the front and two in the back. So you have to slide it, you have to slide the seat one way, either forward or back to get one side. So now we're gonna move the seat all the way forward. on the back you're gonna have two one right here same 14 millimeter and you have the covers you just have to take them right off but just so you know that the back ones are bolts with washers. The front ones are nuts, but still 14 millimeter. That's it. Now we're done with that. Now we can slide the seat back and we can tilt it. Should be able to come right off. Yep, just like that. And another thing is, if you have a bunch of junk or stuff shoved under the seat, make sure you take it out and don't put it back there because it's possible that some wires back here can get crushed and that can also mess up the system and give you that fault code. So next up, when you're looking under the seat, you have a bunch of these wires. Now, like I said, the sensor is on top of the foam over here and it's a very long, flat sensor that goes across basically a good majority of the seat. Now there's a cable that comes out that's connected to, which is this one right here. This is for the sensor. So to remove this cable or connection from the sensor, we're just gonna grip these two tabs and wiggle it out, and then it should come right out. And you just wanna make sure that there's no funny colors in the connections. Looks good. So now we're just going to take the emulator, and again, all it does is it plugs in, sits there, and tells the car there's, someone, there's always someone in the passenger seat, and so we'll always deploy an airbag if you get into an accident. So, connection, just want to make sure it goes in the right way. I would not recommend pulling by the wires. I did not hear a snap, but it it is not wiggling free. So that should be good. Now, being that this emulator is just gonna hang here, it might not be a bad idea to get a zip tie or something just to secure it to something that's gonna move it with the chair and not just float right there. Otherwise, it is just gonna sit there now. This goes to the sensor and so is removed as one unit. If you're going to replace the sensor, there might be another, I think there is another video how to do that, but this is not replacing the sensor. This is just putting an emulator in here instead. Again, $60 fix instead of like a thousand dollars or a few, th few hundred. So if you want, cover it up. If not, don't because it's more or less garbage now, this part. I'm not taking it out. I'm just leaving it in because it's a pain to take it out. Well, being that I don't have to, I mean. Also, another thing is, another reason why we disconnected the batteries is because you don't want the airbag to accidentally go off while you're working on this. Shouldn't, but better safe than sorry. Now, 
I put some zip ties once through a hole right here going around the wire and the other one is through this bracket right here now I guess you may or may not need it it's, it depends on what you want to secure it to but I also shoved the emulator between the other yellow stuff so probably doesn't don't need this one this one just to keep it there just in case But tightened it up and uh, seems to be working out pretty well in terms of holding it in place. Being shoved between the yellow keeps her moving. This keeps it from the wire from moving itself too. So let's make sure the wires aren't being pinched to the point at a bad angle and you should be good. Just wanted to get something to cut the excess off. Careful you're not cutting the wires because yeah, just don't. Now, we're ready to put the seat back on. Now, if also, if you want, I suppose you can put the battery, connect the battery again and make sure it works before you putting the seat back. But I'm gonna put it all together first. Especially if you're watching this, then you know it works. So, we just wanna put the seat down and make sure the holes line up with the bolts. that is. So we're going to put this nut on and tighten it first always. Same thing with the other one. Now I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit, not super tight, so I want to put the other two on first before I tighten them up even more. Okay. Also let's not forget to move it up so we can access the back ones, the rear ones. Okay. Now we can put the rear bolts on. And it also might not be a bad idea to just thread them all in by hand before tightening the front a little bit. I didn't make the front super tight yet, just in case. Now we can make them tight. I don't know if there's a torque spec, and if there is, don't know it. So just make it tight where it's not gonna come off not too tight where you strip off the heads. Good advice, right? Okay, the rear is done. Put the cap back on. So now we're back at the battery terminal. Now we're just going to connect it. Do you need two hands for this? Okay, I'm just going to make sure it's on tight. Good. That's it for that. This is the moment of truth. So I don't know if you're gonna have to res reset the fault code, but I'm gonna try to do it anyway if it allows me. So key in, on but not engine. Dot com brought to you. Okay. Well, it looked like it went off, so at this rate it looked like it's good. And again, I didn't try this before this video, so you're finding at the same time I am.
Sim. Looks good. And everything else. Ah. Let's just clear that. See if it comes back. All right, so the light's off, but as you can see, the passenger seat is not being occupied by anyone. This light is off, meaning the car thinks that there's someone sitting in the seat. And the light itself is off, which means as far as the car is concerned, everything's working perfectly, which is great. And well, <laughs> more or less it is. So again, thank you for watching. Hopefully this works for you. Not a guaranteed fix, but hopefully it should. At least for this car, it was a fix. And if you have a different problem that does not state B1448, then this probably won't work for you. Although I saw someone saying B1447 might be, but I don't know anything about that one. I only know B1448, that's in the title, and I'll link the, the Airbag 360, the emulator, in the description. And I did, I recorded, I'm recording this after I kind of made the end of the video, so just, just so you know, I turned off the, after I started the car, I turned it off, I plugged it back in, and I put it on, but I didn't start the engine, and I did a, another scan. As you can see, everything is normal. There are no no fault codes, which was happening here. And we're good. And this, I didn't, I did clear it before, but the light went off on the panel before I cleared it. So you may not necessarily need the scanner. Just saying. So that's all I have for you now. Don't forget though, the description may contain helpful links, directions, and information. So maybe check that out. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, well, you know what to do.